Hi everyone, welcome to the O'Connor Elder Law Channel. I am your host, Melissa O'Connor. Today I'm continuing with my theme of addressing common misconceptions that I hear from prospective clients or clients when we are discussing Medicaid planning. Many times I have people come to my office and when we start to talk about transfers of funds because we're exploring whether or not we need to be concerned with any fund transfers during our five-year look-back period um, in anticipation of applying for Medicaid, a common um, misconception or, or a common theme that I hear is, oh, you know, my, my mom has transferred $15,000 um, to her grandkids every year, um, and, but that doesn't count because they, they seem to think that um, the gift tax, the, the, the transfer, um, the federal estate and gift tax transfer has something to do with Medicaid. And indeed, it has nothing to do with Medicaid. So while um, your tax advisor may have advised you that you can make these transfers and um, there's very little estate or gift tax implications with that, that magic number, that number has nothing to do with um, Medicaid. And so those transfers, of even those large sums of money, um, come into play when we are looking to apply for Medicaid. And um, many times families are shocked to learn this because now they have, we have to calculate a penalty or those loved ones need to return the money um, to grandma um, because the penalty is too great and um, those monies need to be returned to her so that way um, we can address them and sh they can properly apply and qualify for Medicaid to meet their needs. So it really, it's a unique process. Uh, Medicaid, everybody's plan is um, different, um, but I did want to leave you with the understanding that the estate gift tax and its, um, its thresholds that you may have in your mind from your uh, accountant or your, your tax professional have nothing to do with gifting when it comes to applying for Medicaid. That those figures and those amounts that you have may have set in your head that you think are permissible um, are not related to Medicaid planning and that the five-year look back period, we look back to all transfers. So um, even, you know, depending if you're, if unless your CPA is really savvy on um, Medicaid planning, they may not be familiar um, with this provision and understand that those transfers do have an impact on um, their client, you know, that they're preparing the taxes for, otherwise giving tax advice, should that person need to be um, anticipating long-term care needs that include um, qualifying for Medicaid. Um, I hope that this information has been helpful to you. I encourage you to like and share my videos um, with anybody in your community that you think would benefit from this. If you um, or a loved one are looking to qualify for Medicaid as part of your long-term care plan, I encourage you to seek out an elder law attorney to help guide you through this process. Um, as I've said repeatedly, um, planning for Medicaid is unique. No two plans are the same. No two people are the same. Even a husband and wife's plans may be different. Um, everybody's assets are different, your health and age can, you know, your age is different, your health conditions are different, and your goals are different. And so um, I encourage you, um, if this is one of your long-term care options, um, Medicaid, and you are looking to create a plan, that you reach out to an experienced um, counsel to be able to help you and guide you um, through this process. Thank you again. Um, I look forward to talking to you soon.